Hello everybody, Lisa with Supportive Tarot here and I am bringing you today a book haul. <laughs> so for one reason or another, the last uh, month or two, I have acquired a few books and I wanted to go over some of those with you, see if there was interest maybe in a review once I have fully digested them. That'll be some time coming on some of them, but I wanted to just show and tell a little bit because I love watching these kinds of videos. So I just wanted to share what's been catching my attention lately, what I've stumbled on through other people's videos or reviews I've seen, and let's just dig right in. So the first book that I acquired recently is the Affirmator's Journal. So I have this deck. It I showed it. I haven't shown it yet. Um, it was one of the videos that I was going to film for my very first video on this channel, and I haven't done it uh, since that technological mishap. But I love the um, Affirmator's deck. It's a really great deck for daily pulls, for inspiration. And this journal is really beautifully made. I stumbled on it at the grocery store, so it was a total impulse buy. It was on like a little display, and I was like, oh my god, I need that, especially when I looked at it. So for starters, it's really, it's a hardcover book, um, and the buying the pages are edged in a rainbow. Like, are you kidding me right now? Like, this is so perfect. And I first, um, I first acquired the deck, actually. It was a gift from my sister. For my 40th birthday, I was struggling a little bit with, like, am I happy to be 40? Am I bummed to be 40? So she gave me this really sweet gift where it was like, there was like a, it, when you're feeling good about being 40, here's your gift or whatever. And then there was another one for when you're feeling bummed. And in the, when you're feeling good, I had the affirmator stack and it turned out to be a total gem. I love it. So this book um, is meant to be worked through from the beginning to the end. And each section, each page part to work through has a full size um, affirmators card with its little words just like from the deck and uh, then there's a section related to that card so the very first one is generosity and it says I give generously to those around me no matter how much or how little I have I know there is more than enough to go around and that the key is to allow it to keep going around without stopping if I stop the flow I'm like the one person at the stadium who doesn't do the wave <laughs> I think I love these cards. They're so fabulous. Um, so the journal prompt is generous things I've done or can do, big things, and then there's a section for little things. So it's divided in half. And then the very next one is the very next card, and this one is peacefulness. I can't decide what side to hold things on. Sorry. Um, and then this talks about my peaceful thoughts, actions, and memories. So each section is actually really related. Like, look at the patience page. And they literally, the author literally, who is the author? I guess I should tell you that. Does it even say? I don't think it says. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Thankfully, uh, the author is in here. Susie Barrett uh, is the author. Um, so I'll just hold that up. Susie Barrett. And um, a journal to help your help you help yourself without the self-helpiness. I love that so much. Um, but what what she says in the beginning here is that this book is meant to be worked through from beginning to end so, because the deck or the cards rather have already been randomized into the pages. But I thought this was really cool. And what I might do when I'm working with this is whatever page I've currently got that I haven't filled, finished filling in yet, um, I will maybe put that particular affirmator out on my altar or um, one of my working spaces and keep it there until I finished the writing. But I'm excited because I think that once it's done, it will actually be a really neat kind of memoir of, oh my god, I just opened up to spontaneity bingo. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Sorry, my camera's stuttering a little bit. But um, yeah, so I'm really excited about that one. Really, really excited about that one. The next book that I picked up recently, um, this was a thrift store find. And it's kind of silly, but it's really kind of cool how it's put together. See, I still can't decide. There we go. That's better. So this is called The Fortune Telling Book. And it says, reading crystal balls, tea leaves, playing cards, and everyday omens of love and luck. This reminds me of those kind of like cheesy, um, kind of cheesy feeling witchy books from back in the day. But what's neat about this, for starters, it does have the bookmark built in. What sold me on this book, besides the fact that it's beautifully put together, like there's like pages that look like there have been rose petals pressed in and the writing is um, 
kind of handwritten and the pages look like they've been aged and the edges look like you're looking at like rough paper. Um, but besides just the production value, like it's really pretty. But there was a section in here, there's a, a couple really neat sections in here on types of divination I've never tried and I thought this might be a fun way to just sort of play with a few things. There's a section here on hydromancy, for example, uh, on um, tea leaves. I have done some tea leaf work in the past. Um, apple divination, but really what sold me on this was that there's a section on just typical playing card cardamancy. And I know there's some fantastic videos about that too, but there's just a really easy like synopsis of what each card in um, sort of traditional cardamancy means. I have no idea about whether this is really accurate or not, but it's kind of a fun jumping off point and it is a really beautiful book. Uh, and there's just, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here that just looks really interesting. And this literally smells like it doesn't smell like a brand new book. It smells like it's something that's been sitting in somebody's attic for like a couple of years. So that, I don't know why, but that totally appealed to me. So I'm excited to kind of play with this, dig it out every once in a while. The next thing was a, an accidental find. Peggy and I were out and about, um, last weekend, I think it was. And we happened to stumble across a shop. I had no idea that it was there in a town next to us. We we're always we're always driving about, but this little store uh, was tucked away in such a way that I had never even noticed it before. And the sign on their sandwich board was like stunning. It was like this beautiful artwork, and I was like, I have to go in that store. Turns out it was like a bit of a gallery and consignment store, and there was a ton of beautiful jewelry and handcrafted things. But also there was a ton of really lovely metaphysical type items, um, some tarot decks and things like that scattered about, as well as just, yeah, some crystals. It just, it was a beautiful little find. And right when I walked in, I spotted this guy. And this is a book that's been on my Amazon wish list for a while now, and I just haven't bothered to pick it up. But this is called Elemental Divination, A Dice Oracle, and it's by Stephen Ball. And it's a system as I understand it, I haven't dug into this yet, using just three dice, three regular like six-sided die, and two of the die relate to the elements, and then one relates to sun and moon energy, I believe, and he's put together this entire divination system uh, where based on the role you get, you'll have a certain um, energy present, and then what that means, and I just thought that was really different and cool and something that would be really fun to, yeah, sink my teeth into. So I've got that to play with at some point. So it's in my list of books to play with. And then, this is this I'm super excited about. So I've had this also on my wish list for forever, but I finally took the plunge because there's a series I want to do here on YouTube. And so I picked up Tom Benjamin's Tarot on Earth. This book is like the loveliest thing to hold. It's so much like bigger and weightier feeling than I expected it to be after seeing it online. Um, it's quite thick, but it's a nice like workbook sized feel to it, which is perfect because that's really kind of how he has put this book together. There's spaces to write. I totally intend to do that. Um, I'm trying to give myself permission to like mess up my books. Um, but this is, this is the book I really wanted to start with to learn the Marseille system or the PIP system or be comfortable reading books that are less scenic on their uh, PIPs. So I'm really excited to dig into this. And of course, I had to order the Marshmallow Marseille to go along with it. So I'm waiting for that. I was going to wait and show this when that came in, but I, I couldn't wait. And I wanted to do a book haul. So here it is. And the reason that I um, am so excited is because as a newbie to this system, sorry, an ad window just popped up. There we go. As a newbie to this system, I'm actually really excited because I want to do a series where I share, like maybe where I take you with me on the journey as I learn the Marseille and like what bit of this book I'm on, what my experience has been, what I'm struggling with or what I'm loving. So I'm super excited to do that. So that will start on my channel once I have a chance to dig into this and my Marseille deck arrives. So I'm really, really excited about that. And the next two were um, inspired by 
other people here on YouTube. So I will link their channels down below. Um, the first one was an accidental find um, when I was tootling about on Katie Flowers' channel. She did a review of this book. It's called Witches and Wizards, The Real Life Stories Behind the Occult's Greatest Legends. It's by Lucy Cavendish. I think this is a relatively new book. It's really, really, really pretty. So I'm really excited just to have it. Um, it does have the bookmark built in. It's hardbound. And it, like, look at the inside cover. Like, hello, this is really pretty. Um, but this is actually, as I understand it, um, small bits of, of lore and um, history behind some of the most well-known sort of witches and um, magicians, wizards of our modern knowledge folklore um i don't expect it to go into really great depth into anybody but i'm really excited there is a section here um, that talks more about the burning times and i am looking forward to familiarizing myself with some more personalized stories which was something that really caught my attention from katie's review so i will link her channel and her review that featured this book in the description box below so you can check it out for yourself because she's actually read it uh this is just a haul at this point i have no idea but i will be excited to dig into this one this is probably top of my list after i finish the fairy tale tarot guidebook so really 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 excited and finally i'm probably going to do like an I don't know what I'm going to do. I might do something with my channel with this book because it's kind of fun. But this one, <laughs> which you've probably seen on YouTube, and I'm totally jumping on the hype train here, but I'm so excited because it's so pretty. I keep hugging my things on my channel. Do you notice that I do this? I've totally noticed. Uh, this is The Illustrated Herbiary by Maya Toll. And this book, like, you're going to see it on the video or on pictures, and it's not going to do it justice. Like, it is absolutely stunning. And, like, there's, like, me metallic foil like in the crystals and stuff so it kind of glows it's so pretty yeah puppies were in protest because they were outside so now they're in here we're not coming buddy come on come hang out with mommy nope he's just gonna like hover at the door that's fine anyway what caught my attention seeing this on other people's channels was just how beautifully it's put together and um i only have one other book on herbs and it's very heady it's um it's the master book of herbalism i'll show it in the future but it's like my reference book but i don't have anything that's just really lovely so this is really exciting and of course what tipped me over the edge like it's just i'm just showing you the preface but let me pick another yeah here's the daisy card this definitely has a heavy emphasis on magical work or on um yeah on magical work with herbs is how i take the um perspective on this book but the back section here has, and I'm so excited, I haven't even opened it. Okay, I'm going to open it, just because I don't know if anybody else did that on their channel. Open it. It's got a little deck of cards that accompany, that match up with all the herbs in the deck. Oh my god, these are so pretty. So these are the backs. They're the same um, gold finish as the inside cover. I'm being gentle because they do feel like they're going to just come apart. Um, they do need to be separated, so I'm probably going to do that like Kelly in the St Truth and Story um, was the most recent video I saw of this, and she used scissors to separate the cards. Sorry, you might hear some household noises. People are up and about. My door's open now, but um, yeah, these are really, these are really, really pretty, <laughs> and I just can't wait to actually play with these, and I think I'll... I'm going to be doing more herbal work in the future, especially because I've got all these witchy subscription boxes coming my way. So I'll be getting some herbs in those. So having some more references and different ways to work with them, I'm just going to keep apparently showing these. So I'm going to pull these out and um, cut into them. Yeah, I see there's like little, so if you're thinking of getting this, they're not like perforated all the way down each, each place where they're connected. There seems to be like two little spots like there's a little spot at the top of each card and then a little bit lower down where it's connected so I have a feeling that when I separate those you're going to have a little bump there and I think that's what Kelly was talking about when she said she used scissors and then kind of cleaned them up to smooth them out a bit so you're going to be left with like a little bit of unevenness I can't use my fingers properly <laughs> apparently but yeah there'll be a little unevenness there anyway so that was it um and I am so I keep putting things on my table but I'm really excited to play with that uh, and have that in my working space with all my herbies. And yeah, so 
really looking forward to playing more. So I'm just putting it away so that it doesn't, um, I just kind of put the little sticker back on to hold them in um, until I have a chance to really um, separate them and then get them a little bag or something. But very excited. And like, look at the, oh, that's a really pretty one. Look at the cauldron with burdock. This is, look at this full page, like art is just, oh, so pretty. Anyway, I'm really excited about that. Really excited to play with that. Those are my recent book acquisitions. I've got a lot to dig into here. So definitely going to have fun playing with all of that. I'm really looking forward to starting out with my um, Affirmators journal. So now that I've shown this, I'll probably start putting my messy handwriting all in it and getting getting it all messed up with my, yeah, with my writing. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to digging into that. That'll be really fun. So thanks so much for joining me. Wherever you are in the world, please have a gorgeous day, afternoon, evening, and I will see you all again later. Bye.